It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Gary Hammond. And this is It's Movie Time. Yes. And this is one weird time of year, man. Uh, I find myself in the same spot every year. It's that, that zone between nominations that have been made for all of the awards and then the actual Oscars on March 12th. Right. And so I find myself scrambling for movies. Now, sort of a Twilight Zone period? You got it, exactly. I did find a good one uh -huh. that I didn't invite you to be a guest for, which is called Emily. Well, thanks about, very much. And how about Emily Bronte? Because I needed a tough-minded attorney to help me with a movie that I have called the worst movie of the year. And so I need you, uh, and with all of your integrity, to watch me because I don't deal in superlatives usually at all. You'll not find me saying, well, something is the best or not. I try to avoid that, even though I think that everything, everywhere, all at once is going to take the Oscar. It looks like it to yes. me. Okay. Uh, but you can never tell that for sure. And I can't tell you exactly what my favorite movie of the year is. So anyway, Counselor, I need you to respond to a movie called Cocaine Bear. And you are challenging me. Well, in a way, but you have been challenged so many times in court, this is nothing for you. Well, you know, I like being an advocate. I was encouraged by a former, par a former partner of mine to be a judge, and I thought, why is he trying to get rid of me? But I like to pick a side and stick to it, John. And I didn't know I was going to stick with the side of Cocaine Bear, right? but I am. So the the first thing that's wrong with it is Elizabeth Banks is behind the camera instead of in front of it. Oh my, I find that. And I was I was sorely disappointed but anxious to see her. I've been a fan of hers since the 40-year-old virgin and somebody and somebody make a porno and so on and just hilarious as far as that goes. And we came into the movie. I am not a horror movie fan. Right. My wife and I went to see Alien. Those Some of you have don't know that that was a movie a long time ago, but well, in any yeah, event, the creature comes out of the chest of a person, and my wife turned her head face into my shoulder, and she didn't watch another second of the movie. Meanwhile, I sat there wondering why I was sitting through all this gore and horror, and this movie was terrific. <laughs> this movie, uh, a, a large family group sat to uh, our right, and uh, they had small children, which I didn't realize because I wasn't paying attention to them. But the children were giggling and guffawing throughout the movie and running around because we were in one of those wider aisles. So they were having a good time. It occurred to me that this is a farce. I was in another movie with you uh, years ago, and I, I, I didn't understand it or whatever. And you said, oh, it's a farce. And I said, oh, it's a farce. So I decided this was a farce, and I looked it up. And it's from the French, to stuff. To stuff a comic bit between two seeds, scenes in a religious play, it's from the Middle Ages, mm -hmm. and it means to uh, cinema, let's see, comic dramatic work using buffoonery, horseplay, and typically including crude characterizations in ludicrously improbable situations. And I'm sorry to read so much, but I had to go to the source material to find a way to support this, just like I had to go to the case law. John, I found a case, I found a source, I found, oh, oh dear. I found references. I've, un I've unleashed my own cocaine bear here. Oh. So I'll stop and let you say oh something, God. John. Well, I want to remind you that I'm the editor also of this show, so no matter what you say is, is always tentative. But it'll see something <laughs> disjointed, John, and they'll know you've cut it. <laughs> all right, so you said two things that struck a chord with me. First of all, that kids would like it. Yes. Gee, I'm so surprised. Yes. Of course they're going to love it. You have... 12 year olds or however old those kids were dropping f-bombs uh <laughs> as if they were chunks of cocaine dropping from a plane exactly <laughs> exactly what a metaphor <laughs> i mean my god and uh and there's nothing religious about cocaine bear except for people who are addicted it was profane <laughs> it, was. <laughs> it was so you're making a good case counselor already and i would have to tell you that i found it flat i found it predictable I found the 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 script just abhorrently bad. Uh, I didn't. I, I could not remember a, a memorable line. And I thought it. You want to talk about irreligious? Having that sometimes great actor Ray Liotta in his final role, right. playing in this film. Right. And, and anyway, those are just a few off the surface of things that I found objectionable about this movie. But most of all, I must confess that I. I'm not a good critic of comedy I, unless I am with an audience that enjoys it and I can feel their vibe. Well, the 
five or six people to our right were enjoying the hell out of it, and I was quietly chuckling. Yes, yes, yes. Well, and so I missed that. Mm -hmm. Not that it would have measurably made a difference for me, but still, that's why I always have a, a uh, you know, an uneasy relationship with comedy. I'm just so absolutely tough on it. I want it all to be brilliant. But talk about Ray. Ray was the arch villain. <laughs> Ray was the worst of the worst. I know. He was he was armed and dangerous. He had almost shoulder length hair, collar length hair, stroke back, <laughs> sunglasses. He's abusing his yes, son. Yellow sunglasses. Which yellow I sunglasses. Wore, wore John. John. Then. Is yes, that why indeed. you wear them? Because Ray wears them Well too? I don't know, but I was confirmed that this is a cool thing to do. Listen, there's more cocaine here than Ray had in Goodf Goodfellas. Yeah. I mean, he, oh, yeah. He, he, anyway, yes. Less than in Blow, but... Uh. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I mean, I'm sure Ray didn't care whether this was a great movie or not. Right. You know, he died, as, as, as many know. He died after this movie as well, he might. Uh, but, okay, so I'm, I'm talking about... And you brought up something that I thought was very important, too. Is this a horror film or not? And... I, I, There's lots of gore, John. Is that the definition? As I said, I'm not a horror movie. Yeah, no, no. I know. So there's lots of gore. There's there's uh, severed limbs uh, being tossed around yeah. and heads and and the whole schmear as In far fact, as that goes. In fact, one uh, Hope Madden, our, our colleague, uh, who is an expert on horror movie films, liked this movie. And, and but one thing she did say to struck me, she said there was more gore in this one she she's seen all year, and she has seen them all. <laughs> So you are right, man. This this thing is just this is a smorgasbord. Oh my God. Uh, okay, so t tell me something else that you like. Oh, I loved the uh, park ranger guard, the lovelorn park ranger. Oh. Uh, I I, she, I recognize her from so many oh, oh, minor yeah. comic roles. Margot Martindale. And, and she just was laying comedian. it all on. And oh. Ray was too. They knew they were in a farce. <laughs> they were they were uh, <laughs> they could have been prancing around on the stage with long noses and funny hats on the way that they were going with this. Yeah. I can't imagine that animal sympathizers were really happy with this. Uh, I don't think the bear came off well. Uh, a bear eating that much cocaine could have as easily gone to sleep or could have turned benign, right? Uh, you think? I don't think no? so, John. I don't know that much about yeah, it. I don't either. Since it's a stimulant, I don't see them going to sleep. Being yeah. wild and crazy, I understand that we read in the paper about people that go wild and crazy on cocaine, so imagine if you ate a kilo. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're a bear. Yeah, yeah. So, But the, at the end, did you see, in the, I know you like to look at the credits, did yeah. you see in the end no bears were harmed I, I, during this film? It's all CGI, yeah. And it's all pretty impressive CGI. Maybe just a couple of shots it is. that aren't. But otherwise, it's pretty darn good stuff. The close-ups were great. But I'll tell you, Gary, one of the things that that struck me was that I was not tense at all in this. Where in a good horror film, as even though you know it's, it's formulaic, you know it's coming around the corner, don't go there, that kind of thing, I get a little tensed up, delightfully tensed up. Right. I was not tensed up one bit by this movie. It's where I thought it, it failed in the horror template. That it didn't give you any suspense. It, it didn't allow you the chance to be terrified. When, Would I be wrong in that, but in, that, in your case? Well, in my case, when it started with the actor who was in Game of Thrones as the leader of the Wildlings, whose name escapes me now, he's a nor he's an, a Norwegian uh, ancestry actor. Uh, Eddie, uh, played by Aiden Ehrenreich? Yeah, right? Something like that. Yeah, okay. Um, and uh, no, it's uh, no. Christopher Herg, H I V R G N, I think it is. Okay. In any event, because yes. I looked him up, uh, I'm glad to see that he's getting work. I really liked him in Game of Thrones. <laughs> and in this, to have him be so pitiful and crying, and I will tell you, that I had an anxiety about knowing that this was a horror film and worried about he and his date because I knew they were going to get it. <laughs> and uh, his fiance, I yeah. guess. And I knew they were going to get it. And I it had an anxiety. Have that. It did have that. You always know in a horror film who's not going to make it. Absolutely, absolutely. You are not going to make it. You can yell out in the <laughs> So and the fact that, but I had an anxiety leading up to that, and then and then after that, John, it, I know I'm yelling. I'm sorry. I, I, it became so ridiculous. All right. That I just I like that. It. I like that adjective. All right. Ridiculous. Yes. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Um, how about the satire of the '80s drug scare? 
Did you see any of that? I, I did in, in the Pee Wee Herman and uh, ad that they, inter they put yeah. in there. The kind of don't do drugs motif from. I did, but that sets a context for the time. So the 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 the, the advertisements then were uh, in, in the way way in the way back time. I was a social worker working with with people, and the government ads would be telling you how terrible it was, but telling you how to get it and how to find it and how to do it. Uh, as far as this goes, this was somewhat after that. I think that's an aside we should cut. Okay, you know what, Perry Hammond, let me say this. We're getting toward the end, uh -huh. I, and I'm thanking the good stars that we are. Okay. But, <laughs> that, but we do have more to go on our uh, podcast, Back Talk, which people can go to if they want to hear more of Gary. Gary is articulate. I'm kind of bumbling my way through this. But Gary, what advice do you have for an audience? Uh... I wouldn't recommend to anybody that they see it, so I'm not going to recommend right. it online. But if you love horror films, you'll think this is a big laugh. I would not take my grandson to this, who's almost six. He's way too young, in my opinion, and I was shocked young children were there, and they had a wonderful time. So I'm no judge of anything. Yes, Leo is very discerning, that little man. He's even rejected a, a, a DVD I sent over to him. He did. It was, he thought it was too violent. It was a cartoon. <laughs>